Welcome to Dancin' Moon Songcast. I'm Scott Simpson, casting from Dancin' Moon Studio in Spearfish Canyon, on the north end of the Black Hills of South Dakota, right on the banks of the Spearfish Creek. If you'd like to follow along, you can download a free PDF from my lyric book from scottsimpsonmusic.com forward slash lyrics. And of course, you can find links to all my music there as well. So let's get casting and find out what song we're going to talk about this time. This episode, we're going to go all the way back to my very first album, Ozzy's Guitar from 2000. And we're going to listen to a song called Man on the Mountain based on a family story. So we'll listen to that now and then talk about it on the other side. Heaven. 
as a man in hell can ever be as a man in hell can ever be well in 2000 um we had just moved out into the country um kind of up on a mountain um i uh, I had just gotten my uh, Roland uh, digital uh, recorder and uh, some brand new equipment, and I was going to get real serious about uh, about recording and producing uh, albums. And so uh, this was a big piece of that very first album, Ozzy's Guitar, which kind of had a almost a almost a, a grandfather theme. Um, I uh, grew up with lots and lots of stories about uh, um, grandfathers and fathers and great grandfathers and and lots of stuff like that. And you know, as a young father myself in 2000, um, I was uh, trying to figure out exactly what that meant for me. And uh, this particular story uh, was about my uh, great grandfather Lee who um, lived uh, on a little, in a little log cabin uh, that had been built um, uh, earlier by, uh, I believe, his, his father or grandfather um, in northern Arkansas in the Ozarks. Um, and uh, Lee, as the story went, um, uh, was married to Rose, um, and uh, their first child was my grandfather, uh, Loy Stockberger, who was uh, still alive at the time when I was writing this, uh, actually lived to be a hundred and uh, nearly a uh, hundred and two years old. Um, and so, uh, you know, I remembered as a child going to visit Lee. Um, his wife Rose was not around. She had she had passed away at a very young age. Um, but I'd go up and visit him and was just mesmerized by uh, this this old man living by himself in this log cabin up on top of a mountain. He had a big old well out out in the yard. That's where he got all of his water, didn't have plumbing. He had one phone. It was an old crank phone on the on the wall, and it only went down into town to like one house so that if he had some kind of an emergency, he could uh, pick that thing up and crank it and and let somebody know. Um, he had a had a little uh, dresser in the corner that uh, had a drawer in it, and he kept candy corn there. And I remember um, him giving me candy corn. I remember looking down into the well. Uh, but at some point, I asked um, where why he lived all by himself and. Uh, my mom, who was the uh, the historian of the family, told me the story. Um, when Lee and Rose um, had uh, my grandfather, um, a few years later, uh, when she was uh, pregnant with, with what would have been my grandfather's um, younger brother, um, she, uh, she did have have the baby, um, but she became uh, very ill um, with tuberculosis, um, and they they tried to to, um, to cure that. They they even moved briefly to Colorado because the doctors had said that the the higher altitude would be would be good there in Colorado. But um, eventually they came back, and and the story as I heard it. Um, she came back and and um and uh, my grandfather remembers her being kind of quarantined off they couldn't couldn't even go in to see her and and um but uh at some point um my grandfather's younger brother uh, passed away and uh and then uh lee had to uh had to let rose know that and that was kind of like uh Kind of like the the last nail in her coffin. She uh, she never did recover and and eventually passed away. And so my grandfather was raised by his father Lee and some uncles that lived up there. 
uh, near the family cabin. And, and so that was the story, um, which was a sad story, a sad story about a, um, a man that I, I, I really identified with. I'm at, at, at my core, I'm a, I'm an introvert. I, I thrive on, uh, on time on my own by myself. Um, but I have a deep, deep love for the, for the people that I, that I truly love. My wife, my, my kids, my children, my, my, my parents, my, some of my close friends. I don't have a huge, wide, broad circle of, of social, um, social friends, but, but uh, but those that I'm close to, I'm really close to. But I but I do thrive like like all introverts on on that quiet time. So I had even at that time as a as a young father back in 2000, I um, I had romanticized you know kind of living that hermit's life, uh, not really by myself, but but just me and my wife and my my family just just alone up on the top of a mountain and kind of romanticize that. Um, this story opened that romantic idea up for me, though, a little bit. Um, and thinking about the sadness of that, um, my, uh, my mother's mother always said of Grandpa Lee, um, when people would ask, why doesn't he move down into town? Why doesn't he... Why doesn't he get around people? And she would say, well, he just, he, he just, I think, wants to be up there close to Rose. So that's kind of what sparked um, the main hook line in the song and, and the idea behind the song. So we'll take a look at that. Uh, man on the Mountain, he doesn't come down but once a week. The Man on the Mountain, he'll buy his supplies and never speak. The man on the Mountain... He's too lost to find, too blinded to seek. Um, thinking about that, uh, that chosen, um, that chosen hermitage, um, coming out of a sadness, but at the same time a desire to be close to the one you love, someone who is gone now, who you can't really be close to but you do what you can to be close. Too lost to find. There wasn't anyone who was able to to really talk. Lots of people tried to talk sense into him and say, you know, you need to move down into town. You need to, to come down off the mountain. But he was he was a little too lost to find and too blinded to seek. He he wasn't seeking that out. And he was blinded. What was he blinded by? He was blinded by his his love and his loss of the wife, the young wife he loved, and the, the second child that they had. And then the story, of course, starts. Um, I had to adjust, you know. Uh, it's always a challenge as a songwriter to take a, a real story with lots of actual details and then to work that into a song that works. Um, and so you have to be a little... A little uh, open with with some of the details, but uh, but the storytelling is the thing. Getting the story across uh, as a vehicle for the ideas. She died in the winter when their baby boy was barely weaned. He couldn't even touch her. She and the child were quarantined, and then when he lost them, he knew that he'd never see the spring. So the adjustments I had to make, of course, in the story were. Uh, not the details of of the the separate passing away, but but just that he lost both of them, um, and and the details of how that happened, uh, but then connecting it then with the with the uh, the seasons, um, and I don't really know what season it was when she passed away or when uh, when my grandfather's little brother died. Um, I guess I could find that out, but for the story's sake. Uh, them dying in the winter seemed to work. It gave me the opportunity to say he knew he'd never, never see the spring. Of course, the spring always comes, but um, for someone who's lost, who's lost the most precious people in his life, uh, spring never, maybe in, in some ways, never does really come. And then the chorus. 
Way up there on the mountain, the air is thin as it can be. But he wants to get as close to heaven as a man in hell could ever be. So that's kind of my, uh, my hook line based on, on the, uh, the saying that my, my grandmother always had, that he, he was up there to be close to, to Rose, um, bringing in that heaven and hell. Um, he did seem like a man, who not a man who was always miserable, but a man who in one way, because of his loss, was, was in hell. Um, uh, was certainly certainly challenged. I know daily by the the losses that he'd experienced. So the next verse: you have to dig deep there to find enough water just to drink. You have to climb higher to find enough space just to think. But memory is painful, and it only leads him to the brink. You know when you go to a place of isolation. It's that much more difficult to get the things you need, to get the sustenance. Um, because we, we, we derive, even, even introverts, we derive sustenance from, from community, from the people we love. Um, my great-grandfather lost the people he loved most, but he had still had lots of, lots of people who loved him who were alive. And we came to visit him, and we, we would see him, and we would enjoy being with him but but he chose to be in a place where in many ways he was cut off from from some of that sustenance some of that community um and i know he was there with his memories and i don't know it only leads him to the brink i i you know i don't know i guess there's a there's a hint there uh that uh like many people who have experienced great loss, um, wondering if, if life's really worth going on. Of course, my great-grandfather did go on. He lived a, a rich, long life, well into his late 80s, um, not ever having hardly ever been to the doctor. Um, you know, So he lived a long, long life. Um, but I know that there were times, I'm certain there were times when he, he wondered if it was worth going on. So we have the, the chorus again, way up there on the mountain, the air is thin as it can be, but he wants to be as close to heaven as a man in hell could ever be. The final verse, life on the mountain, it's not so romantic as they say, whether you're banished or you choose to go away, if your only companions are the ghosts of yesterday. And, um, and so that's the realization of the song that, um, as a, as a young father, um, I was romanticizing the life on the mountain and I still do. I mean, I live, I live out in Spearfish Canyon. I, I love it. I, I do romanticize it, but at the same time, recognizing that isolation as romantic an idea as that seems, um, it's, uh, it, it ha- there's a price you pay. There's a price you pay for being an introvert. There's certainly a price you pay for being an introvert and forcing yourself uh, to engage with a large number of people. It wears you out. But, but there's also a price in being separate. And I think being aware of that and staying on top of that and saying, hey, am I getting out? Am I, am I, am I opening myself up enough to other people? The song ends with the chorus again. Way up there on the mountain, the air is thin as it can be, but he wants to be as close to heaven as a man in hell could ever be. So a very simple song. Um, the the finger picking, um, and I don't know exactly what to call that, but this is the first song that I really started to work out, that, uh, that finger picking style that I use all the time now, um, that kind of syncopated... Uh, uh, three finger and thumb kind of rhythm rhythmic thing, uh, which um, I, I use a, a whole lot now. Um, the uh, of course there is the uh, haunting and beautiful um, uh, harmonies um, sung by uh, my wife, um, just absolutely lovely there, and and that haunting uh, female voice coming through in the background. 
uh, was something I really wanted for this. Um, it, it made me think about, about his relationship with Rose and, and perhaps the fact that there in the mountain, he still heard her voice uh, sometimes and he didn't want to leave and go somewhere where he no longer heard Rose's voice. And so um, those, those uh, melodies that Cheryl, my wife, provided for the song were great. Um, and uh, the, uh, the, just by the way, the, the instrumental verse... Um, uh, that solo I did on a, a little Martin backpacking guitar that I had. It's got a real thin sound, but it's a, it's a lovely sound. And the fact that it's the, it's the guitar that I bought so that I could take it out on the trail up into the mountains with me, that, that seemed to be the right instrument to use for that solo. So there we have it. Man on the Mountain from, uh, Ozzy's guitar, uh, released in 2000. I do expect uh, to possibly uh, release a remastered version of Ozzy's guitar in 2020, uh, 20th anniversary of that first album. Um, and uh, so I'm excited about that. I want to thank you for joining me uh, today uh, for Dancing Moon Songcast. And, of course, you can find uh, all my music uh, for streaming or for purchase at scottsimpsonmusic.com. And uh, I really appreciate uh, your willingness to listen. Be well. <laughs>